we're going to do is we're going to review holding the bow and so I'm going to use a pencil for that and then I'm also going to show you how to hold the bow on the bow and then we're going to talk about bowing the open strings. All right. So here is the pencil. So as we talked about in the last video, and if you want a reminder and you wanna just kinda of go through and practice doing it again, just feel free to go on to, to the last video. So remember we take our right hand and we floppy fish. So it's nice and bouncy and very relaxed. Everything is loose. We take our two middle fingers and we're gonna drape them over this part of the bow. And again, remember that our smushy finger pads right here, it's not the tips of our fingers, but right where it's smushy, that's gonna to connect to the bow. And then we're going to have our first finger come down here. Our pinky is going to sit right on top and then our thumb is going to kind of swing right under here and hold on to the lower part of the pencil. So and then you want to collapse your hand towards the first finger towards your index finger. So it should feel like you're really holding out of the bow. You're not squeezing too tight, but you do have a good uh, grip and control over it. So one of the things that we practiced last time was the windshield wiper. So you could just practice rotating your bow just like this. You could go straight up. You could go to the left, to your right, go straight up to my right or your left. So this is a good exercise that you can do. You also just want to be sure that your fingers are flexible. So just be sure you're not gripping the bow too tightly. I'm going to switch to the bow now. So here Here's the bow. Remember we want to turn our screw to be right to tighten it just a little bit. So remember we take the bow and we hold on to the stick with our left hand so we don't have any fear of dropping it. And just as a reminder, be sure that you're trying to do this over a carpeted uh, area or a rug or if you don't have that then maybe put a pillow on the ground or a blanket. Try and make it so you're not over hard wood or stone or marble or any kind of hard surface because the bow will break if it falls. So now we're going to take our hand, nice and floppy fish, let it nice and relax. And then again the two middle fingers are going to come right over the frog, the eye of the frog right here. The first finger is here, the pinky is right here on top of the screw pretty much. And then we swing the hand down. And remember, as I said, if you are a super beginner and you want to put your thumb right under the bow or under the frog right here, that's okay right now. Uh, but eventually you want to swing the thumb under here into the notch and so on. So beginners, you can be right under here, but if you want it, this is eventually what you have to switch to in the future. So that's what that is. And then we're going to collapse our hand this way towards the bow. So we feel like we can sink our first finger right into the stick. And then now that when, once we feel secure, then we can let go with the left hand. And now we feel the weight of the bow. So we want to be sure we can try that windshield wiper nice and slow, no fast motions. Slower is always better because we get a better feel for the weight of the bow and we can control it a little bit more. Give your fingers a little bit of a squeeze. Be sure that they are not tense. Be sure they're nice and loose. I call this the floating jellyfish because it kind of flies away. I kind of like that so you can try that if you'd like to. I kind of feel like it's kind of fun. In the last video we kind of talked about where to place the bow. So we're going to review that. Remember I call these lanes. So lane one is right next to the bridge. That's called Sul Ponticello. It makes a very scratchy metallic sound. We do not want that for right now. So try and shoot for lane three which is right in the middle of the bridge and the fingerboard. So lane one is right here, lane two, lane three, lane four, and lane five. Now remember the closer we are to the bridge, the louder our tone is going to be, and the further away we are from the bridge or the closer we are to the fingerboard, the softer, more airy, kind of fluffy, warm sound we're gonna have. Lane three is kind of a general default good place to be to make a nice open clear sound it's not too loud it's not too soft you can do whatever you want to with it we want to be sure that the bow stays perpendicular to the instrument so we do not want to be like this we don't want to be like this we want to be parallel to the bridge so when i'm at the frog i'm going to have that floppy fish kind of relaxed wrist going on so i can really sink into the string i can use the weight of the frog to push into the string i'm not pressing with my arm at all so you have a nice relaxed wrist and then as i pull the bow slowly it'll my wrist will eventually straighten out So now that I'm kind of in the middle of the bow, I have really long arms and so I might be in the upper half, but you might be in the middle of the bow um, and your wrist is going to be nice and flat right here. And then as I go all the way down to the tip, notice that my wrist is flexed this way instead of this way. So when we're at the frog, we want the wrist to be this way. 
when we're at the tip, we want the wrist to be this way. If we don't, I'll show you an example of if we don't uh, bend the wrist as we come back up to the frog, look what happens to the bow. I wasn't trying to do that at all. That just happened because my wrist didn't bend and I couldn't stay on the, the right string. So that's why it's really important to keep your wrist nice and flexible. So the other thing you can do is place your bow kind of in the middle of the bow here. And you can just practice lifting your bow arm to rock to the D string and then rock back to the A string. Notice how the angle of my arm changes depending on which string I'm on. So I can show you the C string here. My arm is pretty high up away from my stomach. But as I come to the G string, it goes lower, D string here, A string is down here. So at your highest string on the A string, your arm is going to be pretty much next to your stomach. On your lowest string, it's going to be pretty far up here. So you can also just practice doing little bow strokes, so placing your bow in the middle of the bow. And you could go to about the middle to upper half, back to the middle. That'd be a nice basic bow stroke. You should also practice going to other parts of the bow. So try starting at the frog and going just to the middle of the bow. It's a nice long bow, so you can really have a lot of time to think. And also do look at where your bow is. Notice I'm watching exactly where it is on the string because if we don't pay attention, this is what happens sometimes. You see how I just swerved from lane three, I ended up all the way in lane five. So we wanna train ourselves to stay right in the same lane, whichever lane we want to be in. And then the next step is to do a full bow length. And notice you stay right in the same lane. We'll try all the way to the frog. Look at my bow arm. Something like that. You can try all of these same exercises on the D string. You know how we, at the beginning of the video, we started by plucking each note three times? You could do something similar at the bow. You could go... And then roll to the A string. So that is just covering the A and the D string. So why don't you just focus on just those two strings to start off with. And I think in, in later videos, we're going to go over the G string and the C string. So thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.